Good morning, everyone, or should I say good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us all uh, for our second half and uh, sorry, second quarter and half yearly results uh, for the 2021 financial year. I'm Anita Wheeler, Wheeler and I am the marketing and brand manager for Pill Foods Tasmania. I'd like to make a warm welcome to our existing investors, potential investors, um, and anyone who's joining us today. I have the pleasure of introducing our Managing Director, Michael Cooper, and Group Accountant, Fiona Walsh, who will be um, taking you through today's presentation, uh, which will go into our half yearly results in a bit more detail, provide an overview on the company, our recent activities and performance. Uh, I will now pass you on to Michael, um, who will start the presentation um, with an overview of Peel Foods Tasmania. Hi everyone, once again, thanks for joining. I'll just run you back over a little bit of the history for some new investors that potentially have joined us today. Um, Pure Foods was formed in 2015 by a group of uh, likely-minded local investors. Uh, about 20 of them got together and said, let's produce um, some great Tassie food and beverage brands. So the business was formed and they acquired two initial entities, which was Taz A and Woodbridge Smokehouse. Um, Taz A itself is, probably the largest paddo producer by volume, uh, not by value, but it, by volume in the country. Um, many, many SKUs, about 11 SKUs presenting to major retail through independence and local route trade. Um, Woodbridge Smokehouse is a smokehouse um, formerly based around Atlantic salmon and ocean trout, all farmed within Tassie's waters. Um, and that product is distributed nationally um, throughout Australia, recently secured with Mondo Nissen um, through local independence within the state um, local route trade and also through export. About 55% uh, of the business is exported into Singapore and Hong Kong. We have currently no direct supplier into China and China's currently not a focus of ours. Um, the business is, will continue to grow. Obviously, we've had recent acquisition with Daily Potato coming on board in October. Um, and the strategy behind the business is to continue to grow organically and through acquisition. Hi everyone. Uh, as an overall summary, the company experienced strong growth and performance for the first half of 2021. We will go through this performance on an entity specific level and explore what we've done to support and achieve this growth um, in the next few slides. Um, just of note, the Daily Potato Co acquisition delivered 6% of the 39% group sales growth, which you can see there on the slide. The group sales for the half were $3.7 million, which was up $1.4 million or 39%. Uh, comparatively, the full year group sales for FY20 were $4.2 million. So we're really happy with this level of growth. Um, the EBITDA for the first half was $150,000, which has already exceeded last year's financial year's underlying EBITDA of $41,000. So again, we're really pleased with this level of return. Um, I'll just now take you through the individual entities and how they performed and traded. Um, firstly, I'd like to point out it's, um, the December numbers aren't there, but it, all the entities had a record December. Um, I'll go through each one individually. Woodbridge Smokehouse itself in December saw a growth of 51% on year ago. Um, amazing growth. Um, very proud of what we achieved. Year to date for the first half, the sales were up 59% and the EBITDA was up 704%. Um, we spent a lot of work on working on our COGS and, and driving efficiencies. Additional volume has definitely helped uh, driving efficiencies, which has helped for the EBITDA. Uh, within the period, Woodridge has been mainly focused on, on for the group, which shows major results um, with extra additional distribution that's been delivered. Woodridge has a positive growth of 59% in sales and increase of EBITDA, as I mentioned before, of 704%. We've expanded the local route sales team to another, another head which saw us great return on investment within the first week. Uh, the team were able to secure additional 40 new customers for Woodbridge within six months and 65 new customers across all brands. In November, we dispatched our first order to Mondo Nissan in South Australian market, which was very much a trial. We we're very happy with the success and Mondo Nissan's team were able to secure ranging to 48 stores into South Australian December. This meant we were able to reap the benefits of Christmas seafood demand. I can report that orders in January are showing great growth. And as announced earlier this month, we're excited to extend the distribution from Mondo Nissan through their national channels. We expect to grow the Woodbridge business by um, additional 50% in H2 of FY21. 
Uh, the Monday Nissen relationship gives us access to a 1,400 independent stores throughout the country. So we'll be represented in every state. The export also a large growth area for us with the first half existing customers and our two new major partners, the Meat Club and Redmart, as previously announced, both have been major online players in Asia. Um, and it's obviously the Redmart is owned by Alibaba, so great distribution opportunities. Um, we've also helped to increase our ranging and distribution moving forward. Woodbridge has also been very successful in an online store, which was launched in August. We have retained the local loyal customer base at Woodbridge serviced online, but have expanded the offering customer base, which has increased our national distribution and brand awareness. Something we believe has supported the brand within our sales channels. The execution of the growth through the production has been no mean feat and is a credit to our production team. They've been able to reduce volumes the factory typically has seen in, in, within a month, within the week, to, demand, to meet the demand. Coming out of higher demand Christmas period, we're now looking at investing further into production um, capabilities at Woodbridge to facilitate future growth into the second half of FY21. Just a note there, we just received um, only last week, um, our biggest order in the history of um, Woodbridge, uh, an, an order for $80,000, which um, going back 80 months ago was one, Year's sales. Um, and we move across to Daily Potato. Um, Daily Potato, obviously, was our, as our latest acquisition that came on board in October. Um, really proud of the results with these guys. Um, in December, they had a 32% growth on the same period last year, which was an amazing result. Uh, year to date for the first half, they've had a, a plus 11% sales um, growth on year ago, and an exceptional result with their EBITDA of a plus 244% EBITDA. Since the acquisition, Daily Potato Co. in October has been working hard to consolidate, improve efficiencies and invest for growth in all future areas. We have moved the sellage packaging from imported customer product to an Australian made tub, which provides cost saving and meet our target to source resources locally where possible. Our route sales team have been able to range Daily Potato Co. into 47 local stores in a short period, which is an approximately 60% um, growth of the sales. The new range is highly successful with orders increasing weekly, especially salads in peak summer is a credit to our product quality as a consumer's trials, repurchase and a premium salad option. We also extended the daily potato range throughout our online store, allowing the whole range, which has been historically been limited to Taz, Vic and New South Wales, available Australia wide. This has been very successful with Daly's, Daly's Bacon and Cheese Potato Bake being the fifth biggest selling product to date. We hope the success online will assist the brand to extend distribution and brand awareness for traditional and major retail. We continue to work on potato and gravy project due to the major um, retail requirements and capabilities, the potential launch into major retail has been pushed back. This is frustrating for all involved, as I'm sure you will share with us the reflection on the complexity to offer this amazing product into the hot box. Nevertheless, we're working very hard to adopt a workaround towards successful major retail ranging in the very near future. We have, however, just launched potato and gravy product locally into the independent market and will be improve the product success and demand and aim to further expand ranging to existing independent market channels immediately. Our marketing team has been working very hard on the daily brand, which historically has little to no marketing activity. This includes improvements to packaging design, packaging design and above the line brand awareness, digital marketing as deployed before Christmas to support the summer festive sales. Heading, to, in, heading into H2 of FY21, our focus for data remains in efficiencies, buildings and consolidation of operation capability along with additional plant and equipment. Um, and over to Taz Paddy, our, our anchor business, you might as well say. So Taz Paddy itself in December had an absolute record month again since its inception of growing 23% on, on last year's same period. Uh, Year-to-date sales growth of, of 10% and an EBITDA additional growth of 27%. The Taz Pate business saw an increase of sales just shy of 200,000 for the first half over a year ago. These results included three months of initial sales of our new sub-range Homestead Pate, which has been ranged nationally throughout Woolworths. The range has been accepted successfully by the customer with our sales volume growing monthly. The range will also be extended into other channels by the end of FY21. Taz Pate's existing ranges have experienced growth month on month. Our focus remains on automation, efficiencies and Taz Pate to support the future growth. We're also exploring new packaging options to increase product efficiency, brand awareness and sustainability. 
onto the online store just to give a, a bit of an overview of the results um, since the launch of the new store. Uh, so it's been going for about five months now. Um, we've experienced record months right off the back of the launch of the new store and the growth has been significant um, with 305% up on the first half of FY21. Uh, originally, the online store was only Woodbridge Smokehouse products, uh, but the new store uh, ranges our whole um, PFT portfolio, as well as a monthly rotation of external Tasmanian products, which has been very successful, um, creating returning customers with a broader offering. Um, and returning customers is at a growing rate of 24%, which is a very healthy um, amount for a growing store like ours. Um, E-commerce will remain a focus for um, the marketing team throughout FY22, as we see great value in growing this sales channel and the benefits, um, the wider distribution adds to each brand. So it's very much a marketing tool for us. Uh, we also launched our new B2B direct ordering portal in December, targeted at mainland food service and tourism businesses. So they can order direct from us, um, our whole portfolio and we send direct to them. We received 79 registrants and orders have begun coming through with return purchases from all brands. Um, these figures are not included in the online store information as it's still only early days, um, but they are within the entity's um, sale figures. And just touching on our new brand new pastures, which launched at the end um, of last calendar year. Uh, it's a contract pack. Um, produced product for us, which is sold and distributed under Woodbridge Entity at the moment. Uh, the initial launch has been um, through independent route market, um, where we've had 10 customers ranged in. And um, I know that in the last week, that's been a focus for our sales team uh, and through our online store. And we've got a few national distributors that have started to take it on. Uh, reviews of the product have been positive uh, and with our smoked oat wedge and coconut spread being the top two products. Going into the second half of this financial year, our focus remains on increasing awareness of the new brand, increasing distribution and finding opportunities for range expansion. Well, as you can see from the slide, um, we're very well positioned with 3.75 million in cash in the bank. Um, and further to that, from our activity statement, we have a total of 3.88 million available in cash and in undrawn finance facilities combined. So, yeah, a strong cash position there. Um, so just in summary, I just wanted to say that um, thank you to the girls for their support. Um, it's been really busy down here at Pure Foods Tasmania. It's sort of got nearly double our revenue in the first um, six months is, is pretty impressive um, and a lot of work goes behind the scenes to achieve that so thanks to all our great team which can't all be on the screen at once um, we're growing rapidly and employing more people as you've probably seen as our advertising goes but you know i'll just summarize a bit of new product development continues to, to actually be happening in the background um, our maranova um, project which we've actually announced before using tasmanian wakami um, is currently under, under producing trials our product trials, our new mill solutions category is, is well underway as well. Um, some plant and equipment has just been installed to actually deliver on that. Um, we are definitely focused on a beverage opportunity. Um, I don't know one question has come through as we speak, when will we acquire a beverage business? Um, the answer to that is um, our beverage um, strategy will be through basically organically and through acquisition. Um, so I can give you some more information down the track when, when I'm able to let you know, but we are definitely focused on it on a beverage business as such. Um, continue to find opportunities um, to grow organically and through acquisition. That, that's actually, I've said that many, many times before and we'll continue to do that. Um, we'll continue to be proud of Tasmanian support, um, Tasmanians wherever we possibly can. Um, I, I think that, you know, the interesting, we talk about new pastures and we look about um, consumer led categories. The, the plant-based food and beverage category is probably the fastest growing category in food and beverage in the, in the globe at the moment. Um, it's a $3.9 billion category. Um, we're definitely putting a lot of energy and focus into that category. Um, and you'll see some more news on that shortly. So hopefully we can update you. But I want to thank you all for your support because um, without your support, we wouldn't be here. Um, we are growing rapidly as you've seen and it's, um, the team are working really, really hard to deliver continued growth for, uh, for Pure Foods Tasmania. So thank you for attending.
Thank you, Michael. We've just got a couple questions here um, that I might get you or Fiona to answer for us. Um, so the first one is with the Mondanisan uh, national rollout, can you see that that might uh, assist with the other brands as well? Can we see that getting rolled out? Yes, absolutely. We've had um, early, early discussions and conversations with Mondanisan and their sales team about adding um, more of our portfolio to their, their mix. Um, they've got a great sales team and, and cover have a national footprint excluding Queensland. Um, we have other distributors in Queensland which support us up there. So um, yes, by all means, they're very keen to take our other product, which will be great because um, these sort of businesses and these brand businesses, it's all about distribution. We have great products. We just need to be able to get them in front of the consumer. Um, and we've seen by results, as soon as the consumer can see it and access our product, um, we get repeat purchase. So that's absolutely the, the mandate there. Yeah. Uh, another question. So with the um, growth that we have received, um, are, are we primed for increased growth or um, are you prepared resource wise with, for that new capacity? Yeah, no, we've actually mentioned before, we, we've actually got a, a large CapEx program going on and some plant and equipment. So we're actually sourcing equipment from, from Europe at the moment um, to support our growth. I mean, Woodbridge Smokehouse to have a growth at 59% is quite exceptional. So there's quite a bit of plant and equipment on its way for that. Um, the main thing with plant and equipment will, it will improve efficiencies um, and meet our demand, but it'll also improve our yields and also improve food safety as well, which is, which is a priority for us. Right. There's another question here, um, which I might be able to actually answer, is with our retail presence um, with major supermarkets and independents, what's our target over the next year? So we look at um, our ranging on a brand basis, best, um, depending on what's best for the brand, the capacity of that brand and where we have that competitive edge. So um, the goal and the target for um, where we range is very much based on the product. Um, we obviously have the connections and the relationships with the major retailers already with some of the brands. So we are able to um, create those um, conversations with the newer products if we do see fit to go into the major retailers. But as you can see through Woodbridge um, and our expansion through Mondanis and Independence is definitely a, a room for growth that we see um, supporting local just as we are Tasmanian, um, very much that will always be a base. Um, but then to move on to the ret bigger retailers is a, a, um, per brand and um, per what we think is best for the consumer. I mean, just, to, just to follow up on um, Anita's um, conversation there was that we are currently um, in all major retailers um, throughout different channels. So we have a relationship with every major retailer being Coles, Woolworths, Audi, Costco. Um, and independence, so we have full coverage there, which is great. Uh, uh, some SKUs are in some um, retailers and some not, but it gives us that relationship to go and present other SKUs as we um, acquire or as we uh, develop MPD. Um, there's a question just come through on the seafood, seafood growth. Um, absolutely, I've mentioned before, we, we've done some um, initial um, oysters. Um, they've been Unshucked oysters, we're about to, as I mentioned before also, we're about to launch our um, fresh frozen oysters, which are already shucked. Um, packaging has arrived, packaging was delayed. We were meant to be launching in late December. Um, we will be going to market next week. So very keen on our seafood strategy. I mean, Tasmania is known, renowned for its great seafood. So we're um, pretty excited about that opportunity. And with the online store, the oysters being the not, um, unshucked ones, They've gone gangbusters in the last week or two. Um, I'm not sure if someone posted about it or something, but um, we seem to be getting at least an order a day for the oysters, which um, is getting it up there with some of the, um, the the best product on our store, which is really exciting. Just reading some questions here. So they're coming through thick and fast. Um, this question here is how much benefit have you got through the COVID period with people not traveling overseas and staying at home or locally and eating premium foods? And can you tap this? Absolutely, I think that's a great, that's a really good question because we've actually had a lot of growth due to that. I strongly believe that um, although COVID has been really hard for a lot of people, it's been really good for, for Pure Foods Tasmania. A lot of people are staying at home and eating more. Um, they're walking past their fridge because they're working from home. So they're picking out food. They've also, as, as this, um, the person who wrote this question is right, people are, have got, I think, $60 billion Australians spent travelling overseas and 
they're spending $60 billion on, uh, on not only their, their uh, buying new boats and cars, they're also depending on food as well. So all our independents had significant growth across the, every part of their supermarket, um, which we obviously get a lot of data from. And the major retailers you've seen, they've had massive growth as well. So we, we strong, and I, I strongly believe that the, that, will, that growth will continue because I think the world has changed the way the consumer habits are with consuming food. We might just do this one last question, Michael. Is there any update on the uh, growth incubator fund um, and that project we launched? Yes, no, I can say that we've had about um, 35 um, requests for, for interviews and um, roundtable conversations. I think we've done about 19 so far. Um, and we've had about three that um, we've had further discussions with. So um, the incubator fund is like um, as such throwing a net out there to see what's available. And there's so much, we've seen some amazing products. We just need to make sure that they're scalable as well and the raw material is accessible. That's probably the biggest challenge there, but we're definitely seeing opportunities come out of there which hopefully we'll be able to um, support um, into future growth. Wonderful. I think that is all. If you do have any questions afterwards, um, feel free to contact us and we'll see if we can answer them for you. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. As you can see in here, we are very busy um, behind the scenes, making sure everything is as efficient and um, steady as possible to help you guys and we really thank you for your support so thank you very much thank you thank you cheers